Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 11th November 2017. I am Sagan Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we look at oil, gold, and broad market ETFs using Q technical charts. Then we will look at broad market internal analysis using charts and sector and industry analysis using graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may go through some of the posts in our community and look for trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel I'll try to answer them as we go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We start with US oil. We are looking at USO using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. Together we call them at a glance template. This is the template we use to decide if there is a trading opportunity at the right edge of the chart using Q unambiguous checklists. In earlier weekly market roundups, we had discussed about the go with flow long trade opportunity in US oil on this candle. It had hit the profit target upper boundary in few days. At that time, the weekly closed with a bullish shape candle. The weekly candle color was also bullish. Daily was also bullish. So I had mentioned that following standard Q practice, we can book partial profit but there was no reason to book full profit. We could try to let profit run on the remaining position. That was a useful decision because since then, US oil continued to go up. Right now, it is overbought as we can see from the dots on top of the recent candles. It is also above upper boundary. So we are not going to initiate any new long position right now. We will continue to hold the remaining long position that we have. There is no trade signal at the right edge of the chart. The last optimal trade entry was on this candle using go with flow long trade setup. We are now looking at gold using the same at a glance template. Gold came to the memory support line and also the white direction support line and went up from there. At that time, there was a memory resistance precisely at this point and gold reversed from there. In last week's market roundup, we saw that GLD was inside a triangle very close to the peak of the triangle and i had mentioned that unless it breaks out 
we are not sure about the direction of goal. We can see now that it has broken out of the triangle on the higher side and now it has pulled back on Friday. Next week, if it goes up from here with a cyan color candle, it may give us a go with flow long trade opportunity. However, looking at the weekly, it seems unlikely because go with flow trade setup has the requirement that the weekly backdrop candle color is bullish or cyan. Right now we see that it is magenta color that is bearish backdrop and also the weekly candle shape is bearish. So it is unlikely even if it goes up on Monday or Tuesday on the daily chart, unlikely that the weekly chart will meet all the unambiguous checklist conditions for go with flow long trade setup. Instead, if GLD comes to the memory support lines, which is very close to the wide direction line, from where price has bounced multiple times in the past. It is likely that it will bounce again from the same memory support levels. So if GLD comes down to this memory support lines using Q fine tune real time chart, one may try to take very low risk, long entry using either early range breakout or using bull release signal. The entry could be precisely at one of these support lines. Right now at the right edge, there is no long or short entry signal in GLD. Before looking at the broad market ETFs, let's look at the broad market internals. Every week we analyze broad market internals using NASDAQ composite index on the left hand side and NYSE composite index on the right hand side, both using weekly charts. Because this analysis is using broad indexes and weekly charts, it is to be used only for longer term investment decisions, not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. We see that NASDAQ and NYSE continue to be in uptrend in the weekly charts, no doubt about that. NYAC candle traffic light color has now changed to yellow for third successive week. This week's candle shape is indecisive. The same was true in the previous week and the week before that. So though we have neutral traffic light candle color in weekly chart for NYSE for three successive weeks, there is no bearish signal. The candles are all indecision. For NASDAQ, we see this is the first week when the candle traffic light color turned yellow, that is neutral. However, the candle shape is bullish to indecisive. Clearly, NASDAQ continues to outperform NYAC. If we look at the internals, that is the new high low, advanced decline and up down volume, we see they remain weak over longer term, unable to go above earlier peaks. For this specific week, we see five of the internals decline. Only one went up and that too slightly. We see that two of the internals closed below zero and four closed above zero. So in summary, we may conclude that the indices are clearly bullish. The internals continue to be weak over longer term and for this specific week, internals are bearish. 
which was the same conclusion we reached in previous week as well. Now we look at the broad market ETFs starting with SPY, S&P 500 ETF. From the weekly chart, we see that it closed almost at the same price as previous week. Weekly candle color is yellow, that is neutral, and the shape is very indecisive. In daily chart, we see that it had displayed two bearish headwinds earlier. Very gradually price went above both of them. On Thursday, price tried to go below the watermark resistance levels that were created by the bearish headwinds. However, it recovered very nicely with a very bullish shape candle. On Friday, it closed almost unchanged. We can see that SPY is having very good support from this memory support line. Multiple times it is either touching or coming very close to the memory support and reversing strongly from there. Right now there is no trade signal in SPY. It seems to be weakening, but it is clearly in uptrend with higher highs and higher lows. So we are not going to try any short trade. And traffic light candle color in daily is red, that is bearish. So we are not trying to take any long trade either. We see that weekly activity is not unusual. However, on Thursday, it had heavy activity. And this activity pattern is same across all the four broad market ETFs. Let's look at DIA. From the weekly chart, we see that traffic light candle color has turned yellow, or we can say backdrop candle color in weekly chart has turned yellow neutral but the candle shape is indecisive. In the daily chart, DIA tried to go above the watermark resistance level ever so gradually, just like SPY. Then on Thursday, tried to go down below that. Closed almost at the same level as the watermark resistance. And on Friday went down slightly, but Friday's candle was very indecisive and very narrow range candle. On Thursday, activity was heavy. Daya is also having very nice support from this memory support line. Unless it breaks below the memory support, we are not going to think of taking any kind of short trade. It is clearly in uptrend with higher highs and higher lows. From the relative performance line, we see that it is underperforming the market for last two weeks now. QQQ is the only ETF that made a new all-time high this week again. The backdrop Candle color is now bullish for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks, seven successive weeks. It is clearly overbought in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, it is going up again with higher highs and higher lows. Thursday, again, we can see heavy activity. It tried to go below the watermark resistance level, but recovered nicely. Friday's close is almost at the same level as Thursday's close. There is no trade signal in QQQ as well. At present, QQQ is the strongest. If QQQ was the strongest, then IWM is the weakest one, and that is continuing from this point, and we could identify it very early. The relative performance line is falling down more sharply in recent times. 
showing that though the broad market ETFs, the other ETFs are remaining strong, the small cap stocks are starting to weaken. It is back to having lower lows and lower highs. So it is in technical downtrend. The weekly candle color has been magenta for two successive weeks now. At the right edge, it is very close to the yellow direction line. So we may not try to take any swing short trade right now. Again, we see heavy activity on Thursday. Thursday's candle tried to go below the yellow direction line, but closed above that. That candle was indecisive and Friday's candle was also indecisive and very narrow range. From the ETFs, we see that there are not many possible long or short trades. We can anticipate that. However, it is better than previous week. Previous week, I had difficulty finding any good long or short trade, so we had few, but this week it has changed somewhat. Some of the industries and stocks in them that were strong for a very long time are starting to show weakness. And some industries that were weak for a long time are starting to show some strength. This may be times where we can look for shorting the top or catching the bottom opportunities. We look at that when we go through sector and industry analysis. Every week we look at sector performance, analyzing 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar represents performance of one week prior to the red bar. And the blue bar represents performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together, they constitute performance of four weeks or about one month period. Any bar coming to the right of the zero level indicates the sector went up. Any bar coming to the left of the zero level indicates that the sector went down. This week, five of 11 sectors gained, five went down. One remained unchanged. Very unusual, but one sector remained unchanged. This shows a balanced picture of the overall market. And the same indecisiveness or balance we could see from the broad market ETFs as well. There was no good long or short opportunity. Real estate is the biggest gainer. This was weak in the previous weeks. This may give buy opportunities. You may look for potential longs through QA top-down analysis of industries related to real estate sector. Information technology is the industry that had been roaring upwards in past few weeks, fueled by earnings of very large companies, which did well, Amazon, Apple, etc. This sector took rest this week. It remained unchanged. One may see if this is mere rest or a sign of possible reversal. Industry edge analysis may give further insight. Using Q edge, we can drill down from this sector to underlying industries and try to see if there is sign of potential reversal in some of the industries. Let's have a look at that. Every time we open Q edge, we can see sector industry rotation happening in real time. It analyzes 11 sectors and more than 170 industries across 12 monthly review periods. And then more frequently over recent periods of 10 days, five days, two days, and one day. It analyzes the performance across all these periods 
assign a rank of one to the strongest and a large number to the weakest one and also assigns cyan color to the strongest one magenta to the weakest one the result is a ranking and heat map table that instantly tells us over the primary five days period which sector or industry is strong for example requested is clearly the strongest one cyan color and rank one the weakest sector this week is financials rank 11 and magenta color it also shows which sector was strong earlier and now turning weak that is the color is changing from cyan to magenta other than the performance it also shows us through the three pace columns how fast an industry or sector is improving rank or deteriorating rank you can think of it as a kind of acceleration and we can see consumer discretionary instantly we can see from the pace rank of one that this sector which was weak for many months improved rank and it improved rank very fast which is indicated by the pace column we came here to drill down from information technology sector we can click the magnifying glass to get the data in sector analysis go to information technology click on the components button to get the related industries in industry analysis tab we can rank them using the pace column and we can see from the pace rank column that several industries in this sector declined fast maybe it didn't decline enough to make the rank over five days period magenta not for many of them at least but it is starting to drop fast you can see several of them are related to semiconductors one two here and also semiconductor here semiconductor equipment dropped in rank as well this shows that semiconductor related industries in information technology sector that were strong for very long time these two at the top and semiconductor equipment here they were strong for many months actually across all the 12 monthly review periods now they are starting to weaken the stocks in this industry several of them were overvalued i shared a potential short trade you may look for additional potential short opportunities at minimum may protect profit in existing long position you can see several other industries in this sector information technology sector they were cyan across many review periods barring a few maybe in the middle except communications equipment except it consulting and services and the bottom two most of them were cyan for long time and now over five days it has turned magenta considerably so this shows there may be some top catching short opportunities in multiple industries in this sector in this manner by drilling down from sector to industry we have very clear insight of where to look for potential short or at minimum where to avoid taking long trades so information technology is not a sector where we would like to take long trade right now it was strong for a long period but turning magenta now the best time to take longs have passed long time ago this means the time this is the time to protect profit in those longs and even look for potential shorts back to sector analysis consumer staples this was weak for all the 12 monthly review periods 
opposite to information technology and now it is becoming strong so in information technology we are going to avoid long and in consumer staples we may look for either long term investment by position or swing trade by positions let's have a look at the sector through qa to see how the color code is helping us identify the transition from weakness to strength for consumer staples in sector analysis for consumer staples we can clearly see that it was weak magenta for all the monthly review periods and now over 10 days 5 days 2 days and 1 day period it has improved rank considerably in fact over 2 days and 1 day period its rank is 1 the best possible rank over 5 days it is also number 2 very strong that's a big change from number 10 number 9 and number 7 ranks that it was holding just a while ago so if we had any shorts it certainly time to cover those shorts or at least put a protect profit stop order and may look for bottom catching long opportunities energy went up this way we saw that the long position that we could take in us oil about 2 weeks ago we are still able to hold partial position of that booking partial position profit already that strength of oil is reflected in energy sector also going up this week however on friday it is actually the worst performer seeing that which is very clearly visible on qa any long position holder in energy sector may be careful and protect profit in existing longs using q protection signal let's have a look at q edge again energy sector we see that it was weak for many monthly review periods then it was strengthening those were the times we could take long position this week's rank color is still cyan rank is still pretty good 3 out of 11 sectors however we see on friday it is the worst performer we can see that from the pace column as well that is also magenta this is an alarm not to exit profitable long position but at least to protect those profits using q protection signal telecom and healthcare these are the two sectors which are now down for all the three review periods out of that telecom had been down for long time it actually gained on thursday as well as on friday so it may be time to start to look for longs using q charts let's look at industries with best performance over last 5 days four of the best performing industries are related to real estate reflecting the strength of the sector we saw that real estate sector is also very strong now out of those four industries retail rate real estate services real estate management and development and home building retail rate is an industry that was lagging for all the past 12 months and gained strength fast and considerably the stock pei went up by more than 13% after giving a beautiful go with flow long signal on tuesday 7th november the stock was optimally valued let's look at the stock pei.n we'll start from qh sector analysis drill down from real estate sector have a look at retail rates drill down to its stocks and then see the fundamentals of pei.n before looking at q charts 
In this way, we can do complete top-down analysis using QH and Q charts. When we come to sector analysis using QH, we can instantly see that over our primary five days period, real estate sector is the strongest one. We can drill down using the get components button, which will bring the industries related to real estate sector in the industry analysis tab. We wanted to look for retail rates. This is the industry. And we can see clearly, instantly from the color coding that Earlier it was weak, magenta color, and over five days period, its rank has improved substantially, ranking only three out of more than 170 industries. So we could drill down to the stocks in this industry by clicking the Get Components button again. The system will go to Thomson Reuters icon or Metastock Zenith, try to get stocks in retail rates industry. It has found many stocks, 74 stocks. We can click the calculator button to get detailed data on all these stocks and calculate their vital statistics. It has done the calculation and we can see this stock, PEI.N, PEI. It is still optimally valued. To see how much it gained this way, we can click the investigate button, the magnifying glass, go to vital analysis, and scroll right to the performance panel. We are trying to find out performance of the stocks over the last five days. We can sort from largest to smallest and we can see PEI is a stock that went up by 13%. We already saw that PEI is optimally valued. We know that from the cyan color for the columns relative valuation score and internal valuation score. We just need to look at the color, don't really need to look at the scores. So knowing that the stock was optimally valued, and that the industry was strengthening, we could keep an eye on PEI and we could catch a beautiful, profitable, long trade using Q charts. We are now looking at PEI using at a glance template. We see that it tried to go below the watermark support and then at earnings reversed sharply. In superior profit way, we are not going to chase a stock, but we let it dip again, go below the watermark support and reverse with a very bullish shape candle and also a cyan color flow candle on this day, Tuesday. It created a higher high, we can say on this candle, it has memory support line, so we had higher low. On this cyan candle, we could take a go with flow long trade. It was a false downside breakout, so you could also think of it as a box long trade setup. The risk was very small, Stop would be just below recent low. Entry price will be closing price of this candle. Our profit target will be upper boundary. Upper boundary has not hit yet. However, it has already covered much more than the risk distance. So at least partial profit could be booked. This is an example of how using Q edge, we could keep an eye on optimally valued stocks that are at pendulum low. We know it is at pendulum low because the bull release signal is coming in cyan color, not green color. So we could catch the stock at the very bottom. 
and that too after earnings uncertainty was over. Those are very low risk trades and we could take it confidently using stocks. A very beautiful example of how Q edge and Q charts can be used together to look for bottom catching long term investment opportunities as well as swing long trade opportunities. In the same retail rate industry, there are two stocks BRX and DDR. Both are optimally valued and may give very low risk entry opportunity next week if they go up along with the industry. Let's go back to QH, the stocks that we drill down from retail rate industry and look for these two stocks, BRX and DDR. In the vital analysis tab, we can sort by relative valuation score, largest to smallest, and we immediately see BRX is a stock that is very optimally valued. Just looking at the sand color, we know that. And same is true for DDR. DDR has a potential for short squeeze. We know that from the cyan color on short squeeze score column, and it also pays a very nice dividend, 9.4%. BRX doesn't have that strong short squeeze potential, but has a nice dividend as well, 6%. So these two stocks belong to an industry that was lagging for a long time, now going up strongly. The two stocks are optimally valued, pays nice dividend. Now let's look at their technical charts to see if we can anticipate a very low risk entry opportunity in the coming week. We'll do that for BRX and DDR. We are looking at BRX using at a glance template. We can see in the weekly chart, it came to this price level around June. Then tried to go up. Now it has come down and the price level is holding support very well. This week it reversed sharply, giving us a very bullish shape candle and backdrop candle color is also bullish side. And we can see that earnings is over. So the earnings related uncertainty is not there anymore. In fact, it tried to go below the watermark support and reverse from there. So it created a false downside breakout. We can see the pattern playing out in more detail in daily chart. On earnings day, it had a bearish shape candle Probably this was the level of weekly watermark support. Couldn't go below that. On Friday, it went up strongly with a cyan color flow candle that is bullish and the shape is also bullish. So this is a stock that is also at pendulum low, has good fundamentals in terms of valuation. If it goes up, it may give us a very low risk long-term investment opportunity as well as swing long opportunity. It has a memory resistance nearby in the daily chart. So if somebody took a long trade on Friday, it would be good to keep an eye on the memory resistance. And if it reverses from there, book profit quickly. Then if it goes above the memory resistance, breaks it, tilts down and goes up again, it will give us a very low risk, go with flow long trade opportunity at that point. Other than PEI, the stock in this retail sector that went up is DDR. We see that it came to the watermark support level in weekly went below that and this week tried to go above the watermark support however closed just below it earnings is already over so the earnings related uncertainty is not there anymore 
if next week it goes above the watermark support level it will complete a false downside breakout and give us a very low risk entry opportunity in a stock that is again optimally valued in an industry that was lagging and is strengthening now department stores went up it is one of the best performers this way it was lagging behind for a long time dilarts dds went up by 11% daily bullish headwind beautifully captured the bottom and for messies the up move was by about 14% in one week messies had a false downside breakout in both weekly and daily and messies has the best possible valuation also in this industry let us look at these two charts and see if we can anticipate possible long opportunities in the coming weeks we can see that dilarts tried to go up earlier dropped for several weeks it was moving sideways not able to fall down any more and this week it sharply went up this week it had earnings in the daily chart it has already created a higher high now if it comes down little bit and goes up again it will give us a very low risk go with flow long trade opportunity messies also have a beautiful looking chart in the weekly chart it displayed a bullish headwind that created a watermark support level after bullish headwind it went up for several weeks then price tried to go below the watermark support and in this week it reversed sharply with extreme high activity so it has completed a false downside breakout in the daily chart it still has lower highs and lower lows so it is still in downtrend it has already gone up considerably from the recent low so we are not going to take any long trade right now the stop loss will be far away also there is a memory resistance line nearby this stock messies is optimally valued so if it goes up it will give us a very low risk entry opportunity and that may come if the memory resistance is broken then price comes down little bit and goes up again that will give us a proper go with flow long trade opportunity with low risk entry let's now look at industries with worst performance this way three of the worst performers are in banking in finance regional banks thrift and mortgage finance and diversified banks in diversified banks us bank corp that is usb dropped sharply from 7th november after creating a false upside breakout this false upside breakout was visible on the weekly chart as well as daily chart at watermark resistance level it was moving sideways for a while before this drop because the industry is one of the worst performer one could keep an eye on that using qh and take a shot at the right time in usp which dropped by very large percentage similarly wells fargo another bank diversified bank dropped after giving a daily bear release signal on 6th november around the same time us bank corp dropped from 7th november and wells fargo dropped after giving a bear release signal on 6th november it reversed precisely from weekly watermark resistance level 
both of these two box short trade opportunities were very profitable. Let's have a look at diversified banks in QH and then look at the technical charts for USB and WFC. In QH industry analyst, we can click the magnifying glass to refresh the data and search for banks. We can see all the banks deteriorated sharply this week. Regional banks, diversified bank, as well as asset management and custody banks. So we could drill down to diversified banks by clicking the components button. It is retrieving data from Thomson Reuters icon or Metastock Zenith. It has retrieved a number of diversified banks. We can click on the calculator button to calculate vital statistics and do a peer analysis. We can see it has found USB as well as WFC, US Bancorp and Wells Fargo. Because the industry was deteriorating, we could keep an eye on these two stocks on technical charts and take short trades in them at a very high price level. Let's have a look at the technical charts. We are looking at US Bangkok using at a glance template. We can see that for several weeks, it was not able to go higher. Last week, it broke above the watermark resistance in weekly, but this week it fell down sharply because the industry was weakening. We could see that in real time using QH, right at the point USB went below the watermark resistance, we could take a short trade. It fell sharply from there. We can see the fall more clearly in the daily chart. So we could have a very profitable short trade. Right now it is very close to memory support in the weekly as well as wide direction line support in the daily. It is also near lower boundary in the daily chart. So it is too late to take a short trade right now. If it goes up a little bit and tilts down again, it will give us a proper go with flow short trade opportunity. The opportunity to short on this magenta candle would be considered a box short trade where price tried to go above watermark resistance and went down again, creating a false upside pickup. Wells Fargo has a similar chart similar to US Bangkok. It tried to go above the watermark resistance one week ago and this week it reversed from there. It had a bear release signal on this candle. The shape was also very bearish. One could take a shot either on this yellow candle, which tried to go to this watermark resistance, but failed. In fact, on this candle, it precisely reversed from the long-term watermark resistance level. Because that candle color was green, we would not take a short trade on that day. We had a yellow candle color on this day, how far we see that the bear release signal had not come yet. The bear release, the red star on top of the candle came on this daily candle, which also had yellow color and bearish shape. That would be the right time to take a box short trade setup. One could enter it at close of this yellow candle or near open on next trading day. That box short trade was also very profitable. At the right edge, it is at memory support. So we are not going to initiate any short trade right now. It is also near the wide direction line support right now. 
so the optimal short entry was on this yellow candle that trade was also very very profitable tracking is one of the worst performers through the analysis in these weekly market roundups you were aware of this weakness and could profit from it in two ways either protect profit in any long position you might have for example this stock lstr was very overvalued and dropped this week giving a box short signal on 30th october and then a bearish flow candle again on 6 november so if we had long position in lstr we could protect profit using q protection signal at minimum and also take the short trades on 30th october as well as 6 november let's look at this chart lstr we are looking at lstr using q at a glance template we see that it went up sharply in this period it had earnings in this week it had a bullish shaped candle yellow color neutral color in the backdrop weekly chart very next week it reversed while this reversal was happening one could take a box short trade on this magenta candle where price tried to go above the watermark resistance level on this candle immediately reversed on the next day giving a bear release signal very bearish shape candle and also magenta flow color candle so a shot could be taken right on that day profit target would be the support level of yellow direction line which was hit on friday if somebody missed this short trade then one could attempt the next shot on this magenta color candle that trade will also hit the profit target by friday so both of these trades would be profitable we see that there was also a bearish headwind signal earlier that caught the top very beautifully price came down tried to go to the watermark created by that bearish headwind signal and beautifully reversed from there i had mentioned earlier that if we see from bearish headwind price drops tries to go back to the same level then some more selling may be left and there is a chance that price will drop again that happened exactly in this stock it was again a very profitable trade that we could identify using top-down analysis that is for starting from q wedge or we could use q sonar use bottom-up analysis to identify it every week we also look at industries with biggest rank gain and biggest rank drop because they often tell us which industries are going to be best performer or worst performer respectively in coming weeks we are now looking at industries with biggest rank gain interestingly all the top 10 rank improving industries were weak for many months and we can see that instantly from QH. And nine of them are in same consumer discretionary sector. The sector was weak for a long time. No surprise then that consumer discretionary as a sector has the biggest pace of growth this week. Let's look at that using QH. In industry analysis, we can sort on the pace from smallest to largest rank. And we can see all these top 10 industries with best pace. And if we scroll to the right, we see all but one of them are in consumer discretionary sector. Only one is in consumer staple sector. From that, we can anticipate that as a sector, consumer discretionary must have gone up very strongly because nine of the best rank improvers are in that sector. And indeed, that is true. 
when we look at the sector analysis tab for consumer discretionary we see that it has the best pace over last five days seeing that we could try to look for potential longs in some of these industries broadcasting has the biggest rank gain and this stock EVC went up after giving a textbook box long setup on Monday, 6 November. It was immediately after earnings. So the earnings uncertainty was over and you could take it using stocks. The stock was optimally valued. We can see that from Q Vital. So you could take a very easy and confident trade in a stock that was optimally valued in an industry that was gaining rank very fast using a Q trade setup that was meeting all of the unambiguous checklist conditions. Let's look at the chart. We are looking at EVC using at a glance template. We can see that it tried to come to the watermark support level that was coming from long past tried to go below that one week ago and this week reversed sharply the reversal was also accompanied by a bullish headwind signal and extreme high activity in the weekly chart while that was happening in the weekly in daily after earnings it tried to go below the watermark support very next day it reversed the down day had heavy activity and the up day had very heavy activity again. The candle color also flipped from red to cyan, bearish to bullish, because this candle had a long upper tail. I wouldn't take a long trade at market close, but the right time to take the long would be next day, just after market open, using early range breakout setup. So our entry price will be somewhere at this level. Stop loss will be just below recent low. Initial profit target will be the upper boundary. That covered more than risk distance. Upper boundary was actually hit in two trading days or maybe on the same trading day. So at least partial position will be booked. The weekly candle shape and color both are bullish. Daily is bullish also, except the candle shape on Friday. So either partial or full profit could be booked. Looking at the bearish shape candle of Friday, one might book full position as well. Though broadcasting is the biggest rank gainer, I see from QH that its rank declined heavily on Friday. And also when I drill down to its stocks, I didn't see any good buy opportunities currently. There is a possibility therefore that it will dip again before going up. That is another reason you could book full profit on EVC on Friday instead of holding on to partial position. Apparel, accessories and luxury goods is an industry that gained in rank and it held on to that rank, unlike broadcasting. Broadcasting gained in rank, however, gave up the rank gain on Friday. But apparel, accessories gained rank and held on to that gain. So you may look for bottom fishing opportunities in this industry, FOSL, Fossil and VRA. Both are optimally valued and have promising Q charts. Let's look at apparel, accessories and luxury goods from QA, drill down to the stocks, look at FOSL, VRS fundamentals, and then look at their technical charts. From QA, we see that apparel, accessories and luxury goods. This industry was weak for a long time. It gained rank significantly over five days which showed up on the base column. It is cyan and very strong. 
and over two days and one day period, it is Thursday and Friday, it not only held on to the rank, but improved further. So we could click the get components button that will retrieve the stocks in this industry. It has found 43 stocks. We can click the calculator button to calculate the vital statistics. We can see that FOSL and VRA are two stocks in this industry that gained rank very fast. Fossil came down sharply as the industry was also declining. It gave a bullish headwind signal. From there, price went up for several weeks, came down again. We can see that earnings was in this week. This week, it almost completed a false downside breakout. Not exactly because price is still slightly below the watermark support level. If next week it goes up, it may give us a box long trade opportunity in a stock that is very optimally valued. And the risk will be very small because the stop loss will be just below recent low. Earnings is already over. So the earnings related uncertainty is not there. One might try the long trade using stock. The other stock in this industry with interesting chart is VRA. It also gave a bullish headwind signal, went up nicely from there. Price tried to retest the watermark support created by the bullish headwind signal. This week price reversed but closed slightly below the watermark support level. We can see there was a bullish headwind in daily chart also. So far it has caught the exact bottom. Next week, if it goes up further, it will create a false downside breakout in weekly and that may give a very low risk entry opportunity in this stock. Stock is fundamentally very strong, optimally valued and the industry also is gaining rank. Lastly, we look at the industries with biggest rank drop. Three of the biggest rank decliners are related to paper and forest industries. That is paper products, paper and forest products and forest products. You may look for shorts in these industries. They were strong for several months in recent past. We can see that from QH. Let's have a look at that. In QH industry analysis tab, we can sort using the base column, largest to smallest. So the biggest rank drop industries come to the top and we can see paper products, paper and forest products and forest products are there. All these industries were strong earlier for about six months and their rank dropped heavily. You could see that happening in real time using QH and look for short opportunities. In forest products industry, the stock LPX dropped nicely after giving a go with flow short signal on 18th October. It was overvalued. You can see that from Q Vital. And another stock in this industry, DEL, is overvalued now, moving sideways at the very top. If the industry continues to weaken, this overvalued stock, DEL, may give a very low risk, short opportunity at the very top. Let's look at these two stocks technical charts. This is LPX. We can see that when price came to this magenta candle, it had lower highs and clearly lower lows. So this magenta candle gave a very low risk go with flow short trade opportunity. While this was happening in the daily chart, we see that there was already a bearish headwind in the weekly chart. That would give us even more confidence to take the short. 
initial profit target could be at the yellow direction line and that profit target was easily hit in few days well before earnings so the trade could be taken using stock as well this was a very profitable trade short trade in an industry related to forest and paper products the industry was strong earlier but started to weaken and this particular stock was overvalued in the same forest products industry that is weakening del is another stock that is overvalued you may check it out from q vital we see that in weekly chart the candle backdrop color has turned neutral for a long time now for five weeks and in daily chart we see it is moving inside triangle pattern earnings is already over so that uncertainty is not there if it breaks below the memory support tilts up and goes down again it may give us a very low risk go with throw short trade opportunity the other possibility could be that price goes to the memory resistance line or the watermark resistance line and reverses from there those may give very low risk box or bounce short trade opportunities we see that two of the biggest rank dropping industries are related to semiconductors will semiconductors turn around from the very top there are signs of that we may find that out from q edge i shared a potential short on vsm this stock was very overvalued i think it dropped nicely we will have a look at the post before that let's look at semiconductor industries in qa and see how in real time we could identify the weakening of the industry in qa industry analysis we can filter for semiconductors and we can see all the semiconductor related industries were very strong and now we can significantly that is also showing up in the pace column becoming mostly bearish that is magenta that is they are poor rank now and the rank drop was very sharp i posted a trade opportunity in one of these semiconductor industries that is vsm let's have a look at that post this is the post i shared in traders community is this the beginning of drop of the semiconductor company the stock was vsm it was shared on 10th november at that time using q edge i could see that the rank was declining in real time semiconductor equipment had the worst rank over 5 days over these three industries so i drill down in semiconductor equipment industry by clicking the get components button and i found vsm from the relative value and internal value score being magenta instantly i could see that it was very overvalued also the eps growth over one year was actually negative i know that from the shaded background color so i looked at the technical charts and this is how the technical chart looked at that time you can see in the weekly chart it sharply reversed it was going up for many weeks then it gave a indecisive shape candle and this week it reversed sharply in the daily chart we see that it had a bearish headwind signal on this candle price came to the value area tried to go up again it actually breached the headwind signal candle stop displayed a bearish headwind signal again on thursday on that day it dropped sharply it came back below the watermark resistance level creating a false upside breakout 
and on Friday it fell further. The stock is at a very high level even after this drop. So if the industry continues to weaken, this may give us a very profitable shorting the top opportunity. There may be other stocks in semiconductor industries that are at very top level. So if you had taken long position earlier, those positions could be very profitable right now. You may protect profit using Q protection signal at minimum and also look for potential shots. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for joining. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.